Larry King now. He's one of our favorites. It's Hank Azaria. I'm just as surprised by what they call and offer me as what I don't get. I can't figure it out. I, I'm fortunate at this point after 30 years, I'm known as a character actor I, who can do comedy or drama. I always carry a backpack. I have one here today. I don't know why. I prefer the backpack. I was walking down the street and uh, in New York, and the guy came right up next to me. I felt it, and in my ear, whispered in my ear, you think just because you're carrying that backpack that people don't know who you are? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> you know, Al and I worked together yeah. on my 30th birthday in Heat. We actually shot you all night. Heat? It was both our birthday. Yes, I was, uh, I'm the guy who ye Al yells, she's got a great ass. <laughs> Plus, I like the dog day afternoon Godfather, Al. In fact, I was doing a version of this in a play when I got the audition to do more the bartender. And they said, make it gravelly. And if you make Al Pacino gravelly, you get more the bartender. All next on Larry King Now. Today, we welcome back to Larry King Now, the talented, versatile Hank Azaria, the stage, screen, and voice actor, director, and comedian, a Tony nominee, and a six-time Emmy winner. Hank's known for The Simpsons, The Birdcage, Mad About You, America's Sweethearts, which co-starred me, Huff, and the Smurfs franchise, among many others. He stars in the brilliant new IFC series, Brockmire, as well as the upcoming HBO film, The Wizard of Lies, about the Madoff scandal. Brockmire airs Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. How did you come up with this amazing character? Brockmire is, uh, as you probably know, the generic baseball announcer voice that I associate with the 70s when I was growing up. I grew up with, I'm a Mets guy, I grew up with Ralph Kiner, Lindsay Nelson, who inspired Brockmire's jacket, and uh, Bob Murphy, Bob Murphy, who, if you remember, was more guttural. He was as Brockmire if he smoked a lot of cigarettes That's and correct. had too much Rheingold. But um, Bob Costas called it the generic baseball announcer voice of the 70s, and that is exactly what it is. Yeah, but he's an alcoholic. <laughs> yes, he is. He exposes during a Kansas City Royal game yes. his wife having an affair as he comes home. <laughs> yes. In the middle of the game, he's fired. And he winds up where, Montana? Morristown, Pennsylvania. Morristown, Pennsylvania. But, but he had spent 10 years out of the country because he just couldn't, you know, he wound up calling the cockfights in Manila on television, <laughs> which is a real thing. It's huge over there, uh, really? cockfight. It yeah, it's true. Uh, Brock, Jim Brockmire didn't call it, but uh, yes, they have, they televised the cockfights in Manila. And um, yeah, the, yeah, I've had this idea for a long time, uh, the comedic premise being, do these guys always sound like this, not just when they're announcing? Harry Shearer, who I work with at The Simpsons and have for 30 years, who does a brilliant Vin Scully. I don't know if you've gotten this far into the series, but young Brockmire listens to Vin Scully at one point on the radio, and that's Harry Shearer. It's not Vin. And you cannot tell the difference between John the two. Miller does them, too. Perfectly. I've heard that. Perfectly. And Brock, I think the closest modern vocal equivalent to Brockmire might be John Miller. But Miller is smoother and is a... Uh, oh, he has a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice, and he's guy. a tremendous broadcaster, whereas Brockmire is a little more on the edge. And, and what I associate with more of a hack, sort of generic voice as opposed to a... And so you make him alcoholic, he's run down. Yes. He broadcasts games to the crowd. Well, he Not does on the it. radio. Amanda Peaty plays the owner of the minor league team who lures him back to the States to get him back into baseball as this bottom of the barrel minor league team and hasn't told him that essentially he's the PA announcer. How did you get Amanda Peet, a star, a major film star, <laughs> yeah. to do this? You know, we did this short of Funny or Die. We thought it'd be funny if a guy like this melted down on the air and then continued to give the count. Harry Shearer pointed out that these guys can say anything they want as long as they continue to call a game. And the extreme example of that is, well, what if they're cursing a blue streak and flipping out and giving graphic details of his wife's infidelity? So that was the short, and it was pretty funny. We developed it into this television show, and Joel Church, and all I gave Joel Church Cooper the writer to go on was the short. I said, yeah, you should probably fall in love with some woman at the, the team. I don't know what. That's about as much as I gave him. And he came back with this incredibly well-observed, alcohol-fueled romance between these two people. And 
You know, to me, the alcohol was just really to justify being that outrageous on the air, a blackout drunk. But how did you but get But he's, Amanda? well, then Amanda, he wrote such a lovely character for Amanda and um, such a, a, a woman who was separate from Brock, she wasn't just propping up Brockmire's storyline. She wasn't the girl part, as she would call it. She was an independent f woman who was funny in her own right, and we couldn't believe she took the role, Larry. We just sent it to her to say, "Well, we'll be, we'll you kick our her first. She was the first person we went to. We realized what Joel had written, said she's the prototype, but she'll never do it. But she responded to how well written it was. How many episodes have you done? We've done eight. That's the whole first season is eight. Oh, is it committed to the second season? They've already picked up the second season. There'll be eight in the second season as well. They're all written already, in fact. Wow, and how, where is he gonna go? Uh, Where you'll do you go with this? It, it, uh, dare I say, first of all, the, I don't know how much you've seen, but the-, the I've back, seen four. The back four, I love the first four. The back four, I swear to you, are better. It, the story just builds, and it gets more and more outrageous and more intense and funnier. Uh, episode six and eight, first of all, all these baseball guys show up in episode seven, Joe Buck and uh, Brian Kenny and uh, Jonah Carey and, um, who am I leaving out? Uh, uh, Tim Kirkchen all show up as themselves. And uh, wow. and then so Brockmire gets an opportunity to continue his baseball career, and that's where season two. Oh, he does? He does. In the majors? Not quite the majors. Triple A. You're no. in the right area. Yes. Double A. Yes, you're in the right area. <laughs> College. Joe Buck helps him out a little bit. Uh, they have a history, him and Joe Buck. Our guest is the great Hank Azaria. No other way to describe him. We're discussing his craft, his upcoming role opposite De Niro in The Wizard of Lies. And don't forget Brockmire, IFC, Wednesday nights at 10 o'clock. You'll thank me for this. We'll be right back. The great Hank Azaria is our guest. Brockmire airs Wednesdays at 10 o'clock on IFC. So tell me how you got into this Madoff thing. Uh... You know, got a call uh, from Barry Levinson saying, you want to participate in this? He and directed it. Barry Levinson directed it. His son wrote it. At that point, we knew De Niro, De Niro was going to be made off, and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer was going to play his wife, Ruth. And uh, Ruth I didn't... doesn't look like Michelle Pfeiffer. She does an incredible job, though. Really? I must say, yes. And you play... Uh, I play a guy Frank... named Frank T. Pascali. Who was... He was the CFO of Madoff's He company. knew everything that was going on. Oh, yeah, he, would, he and Madoff really, Madoff's brother Peter knew what was going on, but it, it was really uh, Bernie and this guy, Frank T. Pascali, who perpetrated the, the, the nuts and bolts of what was going on there. They, they were doing the grunt work. So it's a very serious role for you. You know, funnily enough, I mean, it's a serious topic, but Frank T. Pascali was quite a character. He was very charismatic, kind of a cut up, kind of a goofy goomba of a good fella kind of guy. Really? Who happened to be very, very good with numbers and ahead of his time with a computer, which is why he was able to perpetrate the scandal. Because it was a lot to keep track of for the track of for those guys, as you might imagine. Not so easy to lie like that How on that level. How did they pull that off? You know I was a victim of one of them. I was with Madoff. Is that true? Yeah. I got my money back though. Oh, I, I heard that they got, most of the folks got most of their money back. Well, if you, depends on, the, the lady who gave three million didn't get three Is million. Is that right? You like working with De Niro? It was a thrill. It, you know, for an actor, it's a big deal. He's a funny guy. He's a very sweet, warm guy. What kind of projects are sent to Hank Azaria? Who do they say, I know America's Sweethearts, you were hysterical as oh, the thank you. I was loved doing it. You know, it. I only did that because Robert Downey couldn't. That was really? his role to begin with, and then I think he was having some kind of difficulty back then, yeah. and uh, so it fell to me, so all different ways. So w they call you for what? When you, uh, Hank Azaria is called to read a script, but what does he expect? You know, look, Brockmire I developed on my own for years and years and years. Uh, Ray Donovan they called up. I, I'm just as surprised by what they call and offer me as what I don't get. I can't figure it out. I, I'm fortunate at this point, after 30 years, I'm known as a character actor I, who can do comedy or drama. So that's my reputation now. So I never know what's coming up. Have you ever had right? your name above the title? A couple of times, and it hasn't worked out so well. I was above the title on a film called Mystery Alaska with Russell Crowe about hockey that 
David that Kelly. That was a good movie. It wasn't bad, but it made, I, I literally think this mug <laughs> is worth more than that movie made. And so that wasn't fortunate for me from a commercial standpoint. And then, in, you know, in television I've developed. I don't know if my name was above the title, but that's never gone well until this moment. Did you say 30 years with The Simpsons? 30. 30. We're recording season 29 right now. Yes. My gosh. I know. How many roles do you play on that? 20 or 30 running consistent ones, and then, but over the years, one-offs and, you know, over 100. Or every I, did, I did two of them. It's a oh, great studio right. where they drop the paper right on the floor so you don't make noise. Right. I don't remember that. <laughs> yes, you can, it's all about being quiet. Uh, yeah. You're not really, you don't have to memorize anything because you can read it, but you yeah. have to at least be quiet when you drop the paper, yeah. Is it fun to do? Well, for me, I'm a voice guy, I'm a mimic, so. So do you know what you're doing when you go in? What do you mean? Like when you go in in that day, do you know what voices you're gonna yeah, do? Pretty much, although they'll throw things at me too. You know, it's whatever's needed on the day, but it's, boy, it's, it's an, it's an, if you can do that, it's an easy job. I highly recommend, if you're starting out in show business, I highly recommend you get on a, a brilliant primetime cartoon that lasts 30 years. That's my advice to the young kids. Up next, we're discussing Hank's lifelong work as a mimic. Plus, well, can he do me? Well, who can't do you? We'll find, <laughs> we'll find out after the break. <laughs> We're taping this on April 25th. It is Hank Azaria's 53rd birthday. Happy birthday, Hank Azaria. Thank you, Larry. Also the birthday of Al Pacino, two American greats. Thank you, Al. Al, Al is 77. Wow. And you are 53. Yes. So you know, Al and I worked together in, on my 30th birthday in Heat. We actually shot all night. Heat? It was both our birthday. Yes, I was. Uh, I'm the guy who ye Al yells, she's got a great ass. <laughs> he yells that right into my face on our both our birthdays. It was my 30th, I guess, doing the math, his 54th. So you started on The Simpsons in your early 20s. I was 23 when I auditioned for it. Over more than half my life I've been doing that show. How did the mimic, what, did that start in school as a kid? Yes, as long as I can remember. You mimic the family? You mimic everybody, whatever. I, I've said this a lot and it sounds like I'm kidding, but I'm not. I didn't realize it wasn't something that every, I didn't know it was a special skill. I thought everybody could just mimic whatever they heard. Some people, critics, put down impersonators and they're like Frank Gorshin <laughs> and others. That is yeah. not a talent, it's a weird talent. <laughs> it is. What do you consider it? I think that that in itself is a, a trick, it's like a freak, it, my friends lovingly refer to me as the freakish mimic. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a vocal trick and it's um, sometimes can, can lead to a hacky stand-up act. Are some people impossible to do? Well, somebody's out of people's vocal range. Like I can't, I can't do kids, I can't do women. Really? I, no, whenever I, I sound like this, this is me talking as well. This is every woman in the world as far as I'm concerned. Is sure. Trump hard? No, Trump's not that hard. It's not great, <laughs> but I can do it. In order to do it properly, you have to, you have to do this. You're fired. Larry, you're fired. This is Trump's hair. That's very good. You are really. Oh, I'm good. You like Spanish accents? I am a Sephardic Jew, Larry, so most of my family had... Are a, you Sephardic I am a Sephardic Jew. Jew. You're not Italian. Not Italian. But your name ends in a vowel. Azaria is... Look in your Passover Haggadah, Larry, next time. You'll see Rabbi <laughs> Azaria is actually no named... No kidding. Yeah, it's an ancient... You're one ancient. of our tribe. I am, I, am, uh, I am a kinsman, yes. So you don't do women, you don't do children. <laughs> no. <laughs> what famous celebrity? In every sense of that. What famous <laughs> What famous Don't get me in trouble, Larry. No, what famous celebrity do you do? Give me give me a couple. Like who do you who do you like to do? Uh, I do, you know, I'm old enough now that most of my pet imitations are old. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Woody Allen, for example. <clears throat> you know, this is not a bad Woody Allen, younger. Woody Allen, but you know, <clears throat> kids today, they don't know who the hell this is, and it's probably for the best. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I did some Al, but you know, this is current Al. I like the Dog Day Afternoon Godfather Al. In fact, I was doing a version of this in a play when I got the audition to do Mo the Bartender. And I did this voice, and they said, make it gravelly. And if you make Al Pacino gravelly, you get motor bartender. All right, do me. 
Well, Larry, you're easy to do. <laughs> you just say a city, and then you, wish, you, you, you greet them. <laughs> Toledo, Ohio, hello. <laughs> Very simple. All right. Uh, we play, Oshkosh, hello. We play a game of if you only knew. Childhood oh. celebrity crush. Oh, uh, it, it depended on the week, but it was always one of the Charlie's Angels. And I think I settled on Jacqueline Smith. Strangest fan encounter. Oh, I've had a few. <laughs> you know, I, there's a, I've had some creepy ones. Like, uh, I remember, and there are, like, I remember, I, I always carry a backpack. I have one here today. I don't know why. I prefer the backpack. I was walking down the street and, uh, in New York, and a guy came right up next to me. I felt it, and in my ear, whispered in my ear, you think just because you're carrying that backpack that people don't know who you are? <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Oh, I like reality television. I like The Bachelor. Real, you yeah, like The Bachelor. And I feel genuinely guilty over it. And I hate myself when I watch it. And I'm, I, I think I'm actually bored and miserable watching it, and I can't stop. Do they ever marry and live forever? Yeah. Yeah. Some of them have children. I, I can't believe I know this. <laughs> the Bachelor. Person you trade places with for a day. Now, definitely somebody in the sports world. You know, to be able to throw like Noah Syndergaard, that, it's got to be. How about Bryce Harper? Well, he's, yes. But he's a, but he's a nat, national. Yeah. So I'm a Met fan, so that's, you know. If you weren't an actor or director, what would you do if you weren't in show business? Oh, boy. I tell you, I've tried, I, I try, I've tried to quit show business when things got a little demoralizing, and I realized there was nothing else for me to do. In fact, I remember calling my manager <laughs> time saying, can I, if things keep going like this, can I work for you? Because I love show business. And she was like, we're not quite there yet, but sure. I, I'm sure I would be Where'd in show business. Where'd you grow up? Somewhere. What? Where'd you grow up? In Queens, in Forest Hills, New York. What high school? I went to a, a little prep school in Queens called Q Forest on Union Turnpike. Oh. I was Lafayette High School with Sandy Koufax and Bensonhurst. Mike, I, I, really? With Sandy Koufax? I was Koufax? a year ahead of him and Freddie Wilpon, who owns your team. I'm well aware of that. Freddie's my great His friend. nephew is a dad at, at my son's school. Yes. Characteristic you cherish most in people? Honesty. Secret talent? Secret. All my talents are on display, Larry. <laughs> what do you think? I'm hiding some from the world? Is there world? a show you'd like to guest star on? There's so many in this second golden age of television. It is the second age. I mean, I love... So, I, I, are they still making It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yeah, they're still making that show? Yeah. I, that's my favorite comedy of the last decade. Something we should all be paying more attention to. Me. Come with me. What's the strangest job you've ever had? I you know. Stranger than show business? Uh, what's the weirdest showbiz job I ever had? You know, I once had to... Uh, uh, they were screen testing an actor named Rufus Sewell for... Interview with the Vampire, the role that Tom Cruise ended up playing, and they asked me to be the off-camera guy for Rufus Sewell the, for that, and it was uh, it was definitely the strangest day in show business. Off-camera, I was the off-camera guy for the guy who didn't get the roles <laughs> screen test. You're getting very removed from being <laughs> in the movie at that. What point. annoys you the most? What annoys me the most? I have a lot of, lot of things annoy me, Larry. You know what drives me insane? What? And I can't figure it out? You're online, as we say in New York, or in line, as the rest of the country says. But you're online, not computer-wise, you're waiting. And there's that, always that person who's taking forever. I hate Whatever that. it is. Cash register. And you can't figure out what could possibly take a human being that long. And then you're, it's your turn, and it takes 12 seconds, as it should. And just when they're done, they fumble with something. Something. And you just want to ask, what was all that? What possibly could have been the problem? I sometimes ask. Do you ask? Yeah. <laughs> tell me That's something. That's why you're Larry King. And and tell me something people don't know about you. I didn't know you were Jewish. I'm a Sephardic Jew, Spanish Jew. They might not know that, right? Uh, what else, Hank? I don't know, my goodness. Uh, 
What don't they know about me? I feel like I'm such an open book, lad. Yeah, you are, Hank. I mean, especially right, because lately I've been promoting the show. I... You don't have to answer. <laughs> I'm going to plead the fifth on that. Hank Azaria stars in Brockmire, a show you must see on IFC Wednesdays at 10. He will answer your social media questions in our final segment. We'll be right back. We're back with Hank. We're back. We're bank. Well, it's the same thing bank you're banking. Good. Bank with Hack Azaria. That'll we're back work. with Hack Azaria, who stars in Bruckmeyer, and we have some social media questions. At Venom Vextros, <laughs> who could drink more, Homer Simpson or Jim Bruckmeyer? That is a classic confrontation. <laughs> That must be avoided at all costs. That's like crossing the streams in that Ghostbusters film. That 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 could cause a, an apocalyptic reaction. No, they're equal, maybe. Yeah, I think Homer, because he's a cartoon, probably has the. <laughs> Jody Cole, Joe Brown, you have played so many drastically different roles. What's the one you're looking for now? What's the next for you? This Brock Meyer, what I'm doing right now, is my favorite thing I think I've ever done. Not just because I helped create it, but I love it so much, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. And honestly, this feel like this kind of thing. There's nothing beyond this for me. Like this really feels like my show business bar mitzvah, if you will. Uh -huh. I really love doing it. It is great. At Ignition J. Riley, why isn't Huff still on the air, and do you miss it? Huff is still not still on the air because Les Moonves canceled it. That's the main reason. And it only got like 200,000 viewers. People loved the show, but I think it was a little ahead of its time. Bryson Knox, how long do you plan on voicing characters on The Simpsons? As long as they will have me. How long is The Simpsons booked for? We're recording season 29 now. We'll certainly do season 30. Beyond that, I don't know. But if I had to bet, I would say we'd probably keep going. There'll be another movie, too? I'm sure there will, but not till the show ends. Rice and Clark asks, do you have a favorite Don Rickles moment? I was fortunate enough to know Don Rickles. I know him 58 years. I'll bet you know him better than I, I did. Although there was a period of time there about 15 years ago where I hung out with him a fair amount. He's, as you know, what... Genuinely a, decent, wonderful. Um, nothing was as great as being as made fun of by Don. I, I used to be married to Helen Hunt. He used to love to pick on me as if I were her, you know, her schnorrer, ne'er-do-well, uh, unemployed. Exactly, Mr. Hunt. And uh, so we were at his show one night, and um, <laughs> he introduced Helen, and she stood up, and everybody applauded. And then he introduced me, and I got about this one. I went, all right, Hank, sit down. It's over. <laughs> let me get up. And then he went, Helen goes, uh, Helen stands by the bed every morning looking down at me going, get a job. <laughs> anyway, I... Uh, being made fun so of by yeah, he was great. Uh, my friend's birthday party, Sid Young, who was a best friend of Sandy Koufax, Sandy was there, and Rickles walks in, he goes over to Sandy, he says, Sandy, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, on those old Rosie, Jimmy oh. Stewart, hi, I, I spoke to the family, Jimmy, you're doing well. <laughs> he, you know, he was awesome. Frank, stand up, hit somebody. <laughs> exactly. So, at Megan Maniac, are you open to doing further dramatic roles? Comedic actors sometimes make the best dramatic performers, true. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, you know, Ray Donovan, I play a real insane creep on that show, and uh, uh, although there's a lot of humor in it, but absolutely, I, I love doing Why, it. Why, Milton Berle was a great actor. What makes comics good at acting? Uh, well, not, not all comics, no. but... But stand-up guys who are acting all the time, just going on a stage is acting. That's true. And um, I don't know. I think uh, if you have an understanding of what's funny, by definition, you understand enough about the human condition that you could probably portray it in a more serious way. But I, listen, I had a study. I'm much more of a natural comedian. It was only through acting class, working with a guy named Roy London, I felt comfortable working that way. And you love doing comedy. I do. It's more fun to do comedy. Tony Randall says, comedy is a serious business. It's true. Mm -hmm. There's a, I mean, Edmund Keene, great stage actor, uh, dying is easy, comedy is hard. Mm -hmm. Comedy is more exacting because you have to get a laugh. I mean, there's... You know a, how you're doing. Yes, <laughs> but it's more fun. At DJ's Voices 1985, did you always feel like you were going to be an accomplished voice actor? And do you love doing impressions? I do. I, I would be doing impressions whether I was paid to do that or not. I just enjoy it and entertain myself as a child and teenager and young adult. Uh, no, it wasn't something I was shooting at. And I 
wasn't even the Simpsons I got as auditioning as an, a non-camera act. I mean, I wasn't, they weren't looking for on-camera personalities, but that came through my on-camera agent. It wasn't even a voiceover. Who's gig. your favorite Simpson coach? That changes over the years. I really love Kent Brockman. Harry Shearer does Kent Brockman. I find that newscast, I've been, I'm obsessed with broadcaster voices like Brockmeyer, and Harry's literally a genius at the cadences of those guys, and I find that fascinating. I love Ralph Wiggum as well. He's the hardest, the, the writers will tell you he's the hardest character to write. Because? Because he's so stupid <laughs> that it's hard to write somebody that dumb, that brief. It's almost like writing haiku, they say. It's really hard. <laughs> You're the best, Hank. Thanks, Larry. Hank Azaria. Don't miss Brockmire. It airs Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on IFC, and The Wizard of Lies will airs May, that'll air May 20th on HBO. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time. <laughs>